As promised, we're diving back in with Marie Antoinette. In the last video, we learned that there are rumors that we purchased the necklace that Louis XV commissioned for Madame de Berry. This is the affair of the diamond necklace. And in this episode, we go and confront Bomer, the jeweler who made the necklace. I need to speak to the merchant personally if I want to get to the bottom of this. However, nothing could have prepared me for the developments behind the scenes. Ooh. Determined to get to the bottom of things, I send for the carriage so as to leave the palace in secret with Gabrielle. Let's see how sending for the royal carriage helps you to leave in secret. All right, I just have to disguise myself. Of course you do. I need something in which I can move freely and that isn't too flashy. Can you help me? Of course. Free and flashy. We need to be simple and noble. Oh, this dress doesn't fit any of the uh, requirements. All right. Simple and noble, I guess, is the time to go to 1875. Let's do it. Is that really the only thing we can wear on our head? Okay. Those gloves are ugly. Those ones are ugly too. I can't get rid of the fan. It won't let me get rid of the fan. Okay, we're keeping the fan. Well, there's a dress from 1870, a shoes from 2020, and a hat from goodness only knows when. Oh, we'll keep the, we'll keep the relic. She's not wearing any stockings. Well, I did terribly, didn't I? Should I retry? No. What on earth is this? No, nope, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're taking a moment out of gameplay to look at this background. So there appears to be a taxidermy rabbit head wearing a ruff above the fireplace. What is this thing here? The thing where I've just tapped, the, where the flowers were. It was Bomer. What is that? Comment down below if you can figure out what that is. There's maybe a, a red-headed Joan of Arc up there. And then, of course, we mustn't ignore this cat thing. What is that? That is so deeply unsettling. What is that? There's some questions were made not to be answered. Your Majesty, what an honor to have you in my humble shop. What may I do for you today? I guess you've heard about the rumors that I purchased de Berry's necklace, even though, even though I'm very sure I rejected you. The fact that she said, I'm very sure I'm rejected you makes it sound like she's not entirely sure. Like if she were well, positive she rejected him, she would have just said, even though I rejected you. The very sure makes it sound like, I'm very sure I rejected you, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, offer that day, even though I'm very, I'm very sure I rejected your offer that day. But Madame Adelaide sent word that you'd changed your mind. Madame Adelaide. Okay, so she was not involved in this. This would have been uh, the Cardinal de Rune who had sent word that she changed her mind. Madame Adelaide, she was behind this. Bomer, what did she say to you? Bomer is silent. He seems to realize how grave this matter is. Bomer, answer Her Majesty's question. Okay. I'm actually impressed, Gabrielle. I told her to grow a spine, I told her to get a backbone, and now she is. Good on you, Gabrielle. Finally, I've said something nice to her. I've done but nothing but mean to her this entire time, but I finally like her. Yes, yes, Madame told me that you liked the necklace a lot. She said that you were worried that if you agreed to purchase it on the spot, the king would find out, so you rejected it. She said 
you would definitely come back to my shop, so... Even if I had purchased it, why would there be rumors? These rumors have spread across the land. They've damaged my reputation. Your Majesty, those rumors have nothing to do with me, I swear. Merchants like me have to keep our dealings a secret. Are you sure? If you dare lie to the Queen, you'll know the consequences. Of course, I speak nothing but the truth. Gabrielle and I share a knowing glance. We think Bomer's telling the truth, but without any proof, I can't do anything about Adelaide. I resent that they're changing history to make a person with my name evil when she wasn't evil in real life. She played the organ. I play the organ. Everybody knows that people who play organ are good. She's insulted Gabrielle in front of me, and now this? I don't understand why she's attacking me. Gabrielle, have I offended Madame Adelaide? Why doesn't she like me? No, you haven't. It's not your fault, Marie. She's still a yes woman, I see. Nothing's ever your fault, Marie. You're perfect. You're an absolute angel. You've never done anything wrong in your entire life. Gabrielle gives Bomer a warning look and then says in hushed tones, I think this has something... <laughs> I think this has something to do with the previous king. His majesty used to spend a lot of money on Madame... On Madame Pompadour. <laughs> I know it's a small oversight, but leaving out the de just makes it sound so different. On Madame de Pompadour and Madame de Berry... <laughs> When Madame Adelaide and the other two Madames reached marriageable age, their royal father could no longer afford their dowry. Whenever you bought jewelry, she would tell the king you were wasting money. I get it now. The Duberry necklace must, have, must hold painful memories for Adelaide, and I've become a convenient target for her to vent on. Editing me will pop in and see if this is true, but... Just going on common sense, I really doubt that it's true that Madame Adelaide was not able to marry because her father had blown her dowry on his mistresses. Even without a dowry, she would have still been a very good match for pretty much any prince in Europe to marry. So she still would have had her pick of princes, even without a dowry, because she was the daughter of the King of France, which is one of the most, if not the most powerful country in Europe at the time. But who knows, maybe I'm wrong. Madame Adelaide was born in 1732 and she was raised in Versailles. She was reportedly very intelligent and beautiful and very musical. We've already established that she played the organ and she was also taught to play the horn and the Jew's harp in addition to other instruments. She didn't marry, it's true, but that was because at the time she came of marriageable age, there were no eligible Catholic princes and she preferred to remain unmarried rather than to marry below her station. That being said, it is reported that she fell in love with a guard in her teenage years. And when it came out that she'd fallen in love with so, so lowly a fellow, he was promptly sent away from Versailles. She survived the revolution and died in the year 1800 in Austria. If I were Marie, I'd be able to brush this incident off after I calmed down, but I'm not Marie. How do you know you'd be able to brush this incident off after you calm down if you are Marie? You don't know her, You're, you keep on saying that you are not Marie. So how do you know? If I don't do anything about this, the consequences could be dire. Not only my life will be at stake, but the lives of people I care about as well. Marie, what should we do? Should we report this to the king? No, we've done all we can, and the matter should blow over. You see, this is what I love about Marie Antoinette. She vows to do something, and then she does it. I not doing anything. That is the best way of doing something, is doing nothing. However, since the king has already sent men to clear my name, I think, well, the rumors do mention Bomer, so he should be key to solving the issue. Bomer, if the rumors do not die down and continue eroding the people's trust in the royal family, I hope you can clear my name. Of course, if that is your wish, Your Majesty, I would be glad to help. 
no, that is not her wish. She wants you to go around and tarnish her name, drag her name through the mud as much as you possibly can. Your Majesty, please accept this as an apology. Why is a jeweler giving her a dress? Why does he even have a dress? I mean, what he wants to do on his own time is none of my concern, but that certainly wouldn't fit him. It feels like it would be more fitting for her to give her jewelry, because he is a jeweler. Okay, and let's look at this. It's called the Rose Ball Gown, and like roses, it is white. I guess there are white roses, but I feel like rose is usually like a pinkish color. I can't really see. It's got the engagements on the sleeves. That's about it. Pretty bland. I don't want anything from him, but I also want him, but I also don't want him to misunderstand. So I'll just have to accept this gift. Misunderstand what? And why don't you want anything from him? It's not like he actually did anything wrong. Gabrielle, let's go. Okay, Bomer, remember the Queen's words. They're being unnecessarily mean to this man. Like, he didn't do it. He thought that he was doing what she wanted. He didn't do anything wrong. I wasn't expecting this, but at least things haven't gotten any worse. As I turn to leave Bomer's waiting room. <sighs> Jean de la Motte. <gasps> oh, this is exciting. <gasps> so this is the woman who, in real life, was behind the affair of the necklace. So maybe they're not pinning it on Madame Adelaide. Maybe they are actually going to pin it on de la Motte. This is exciting. I mean, I'm assuming it's De Lamont. Her name is Jean, and it's in connection with the affair of the diamond necklace, so odds are. How much, what should her voice be? I'm truly sorry. No, that's, that's not gonna do. I'm truly sorry, Majesty, Madame. Thank goodness. My friend's all right. Watch where you're going. My apologies. I should be more careful. I'm Jean de Valois. Yes! <laughs> Jean de Valois Saint-Rémy was born to a poor family in northern France, but because her father was descended from the house of Valois, she is recognized as a member of nobility. To maintain a lavish lifestyle, she forged the queen's writing to create a fake letter, which she used to trick Cardinal Rune into purchasing the de Berry necklace. She is the mastermind behind the affair of the diamond necklace. <gasps> Oh, the historical accuracy of that little, of that little sentence has made the stick of butter that is my heart melt. Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, it's, it's awful, but it's wonderful. Shopping trip. I'm glad to help. Okay, I don't remember what she was saying before that. I know the shops around here quite well and would like to be your guide to apologize for crashing into you. I'll make sure you get the best buys here. The best buys. <laughs> She's gonna take them to Best Buy. Her gaze is fixed on me. Despite her friendly smile, I can't help but feeling a shiver down my spine. <sighs> um, no, there's no need for that. Thank you. I'm a little tired. Maybe another day. Oh, tired already? All right, but please allow me to help you next time. Oh, I didn't even look into what she was wearing. Marie, I'm glad you didn't say yes. That lady is from an aristocratic family, but nobody knows anything about her except that she's apparently done terrible things in the past. It's best not to associate with her. Ooh. Okay, editing me is going to come in again because I'm not sure if John de Lamont actually already had a negative reputation at the time of the uh, necklace affair or if this kind of created her negative reputation. I can find no record of her having an evil reputation before the affair of the diamond necklace. However, I did learn that she was incredibly poor growing up and in her early years, she and her three siblings, or two siblings, she was one of three, uh, three surviving, that is, three others died. She and her two surviving siblings found it necessary to beg for food, so that's heartbreaking. But I can't find any evidence of a bad reputation before the affair of the diamond necklace. I'm glad I relied on my intuition. I can't afford to get caught up in any more trouble, so it's best to be careful. As I'm about to get back into the carriage, someone I never expected to see appeared at the door of the jewelry shop. Your, your majesty, I'm so glad to see you here. 
this must be the Cardinal de Rouen. If you don't remember, he's the man who was, he was very much tied into the necklace affair. Jean de Lamotte was writing to him, pretending to be the queen. Uh, and he's the one who actually placed the order for the necklace. Your Majesty, greetings. I hope you'll give me a chance to explain. There's no need. The words slipped out of my mouth and I'm startled by how cold I sound. What's wrong with me? Oh, it must be Marie speaking. If only I could do that whenever I make a mistake, whenever I'm rude, I could say, oh, sorry, it's not me. It's just the person whose body I've inhabited. <laughs> she's, the, she's the rude one, not I. The person in front of me is Cardinal Louis Rhone. He's been trying to get into Marie's good books lately, so he keeps fawning on her. Louis Rhone Edouard de Rhone is a cardinal. He's a member of the group against French-Austrian relations and previously attempted to obstruct the political marriage between Mary and Louis, probably. I'm not sure if this is true. Again, editing me will pop in. This, combined with his flamboyant lifestyle, has earned, earned him the hatred of both Mary, Maria Theresa, who is the Empress of Austria and Marie Antoinette's mother, and Queen Marie. Later on, he tried to gain the Queen's favor, and that is how he fell into Jean de Lamotte's trap. That whole thing was actually 100% correct. He opposed the alliance between France and Austria, and he had an extravagant and venial lifestyle, which he made little secret to hide. And because of this, Empress Maria Theresa did not like him at all. And she had a lot of opportunities to dislike him because he was actually the ambassador of uh, France to the Austrian court. So she interacted with him. Although he was no longer the ambassador at the point that this story takes place. He was ambassador from 1771 to 74. But in the past, he spread rumors about Queen, Ter Queen Teresa. Her name is not Queen Teresa. Her name is Maria Teresa. About Maria Teresa in public. So Mary hates him. Um, what was his voice? Your Majesty, I know you're angry with me, but it really was just a misunderstanding. Please give me a chance. Should I reproach him and leave, or just leave without saying a word? I mean, I'm not getting the notice that this is going to drastically impact the story, so I don't think it really matters. So let's reproach him. Perhaps the current rumors are no longer accurate, but if he never did such a thing, why would he try so hard? Perhaps the current rumors are no longer accurate, but if he never did such a thing, why would he try so hard? If you can make that make sense, please let me know what it means, because I have no idea. And he's probably here because he's thinking of buying jewelry to appease me. I've never accepted any of his gifts. Why did he insult my mother if he's so desperate to remain in my good books? Fair question. Look at how eager he is to please. I can't help but rage further. You dare to spread insults about my mother, yet you expect me to believe that they're simply rumors? I'm really sorry, your majesty. I was young and foolish, and I made a mistake. I'm willing to make amends for whatever harm I've done. Please forgive me. By buying my favor with jewelry, I'll never expect bribery from someone who has insulted my mother. A storm of emotions is churning inside me. I feel as though I'm under someone else's control. Your Majesty, please give me a chance to make amends on behalf of Queen Maria Theresa's love for God. Marie, I know you're angry, but please spare a thought for your health. You're right, Gabrielle. I take a few deep breaths and force myself to calm down. Once I've regained my composure, I look at Rowan again. My mother is a devout Catholic. For her sake, I shall refrain from rebuking you further, because everybody knows that rebuke is a cardinal sin in Catholicism. However, this does not mean that I'll forgive you. Remember your position, cardinal, and make sure you do not do any other improper things. I flick Roan a displeased glance and pull Gabrielle towards the carriage. How do you flick somebody a glance? I'm just getting into the carriage. When I happen to see that strange woman, Jean de Valois, walking towards him, I instantly get a bad feeling, but I 
can't explain why. Are you all right? Your face is so pale. Maybe I'm just a bit tired out from dealing with all of this. Don't worry about me, Gabrielle. Let's go back and rest. I've only been here for a few days and so much has happened. It all makes me so tense and nervous. I try my best to sweep it all to the back of my head, close my eyes and lulled by the swaying of the carriage, I sink into a deep sleep. All right. Let's leave it here for now. Okay, we're at 11%. <laughs> Great. A huge, huge thank you to Mary Royal, Kit Kat Stitch, Emily Donnelly, Sandra White, River Shoal, and V Birchwood for sponsoring this channel on Patreon. If you would also like to sponsor the channel on Patreon, I'll leave a link in the description below. No hard feelings if you can't. I'll also link to my Instagram below where you should definitely follow me and to my email in case you need to get in touch with me. I, again, really hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and I think that's everything. They've made it so complicated these days. And I will see you next time for some sewing. Finally, we're getting back into sewing. Bye-bye.